Welcome, everybody. We're excited to have you guys here uh, this afternoon for our mastermind. We've got some uh, super exciting guests for you today, and we've also got some great information. We're giving you the latest numbers and get you caught up on what's happening in our luxury division. We always want to start with what the luxury opportunity looks like, because we're the world's largest real estate company. Your opportunity is huge, and I want to make sure that you're aware of it and that you're taking advantage of it. If I haven't met you before, you haven't been on the call. My name is Mark Olish. I'm the South Florida Regional Director. And every month we do a luxury call. Now, one of the cool things that's happened as we've started tracking numbers under uh, Brady Sandal is we have some really powerful things to share with you. Most of all, referrals, which is a huge opportunity for everybody. Do you know that through August, we have over 5,000 transactions that involve referrals for a total of $11 billion dollars? So part of your opportunity as we go through this call and even as we meet in subsequent meetings, which I'm sure we'll be getting together again here uh, fairly soon, hopefully before family reunion in, uh, in next year. Uh, but part of the opportunity is to connect with each other, right? And to make sure some of these uh, referrals happen. So you'll have that opportunity by seeing fellow luxury agents on the call. And then also when we do things in person. So one of the people who does referrals really well, and we've had her as a guest on our call before, is from our Miami Beach office. And I want to bring into our spotlight, Catherine Rain. Because Catherine, you are really good with referrals. And part of what you've done is you've started teaching around the country, really. Could you just tell us a little bit about that? Sure, absolutely. Um, so hi, and welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Catherine from Miami Beach. I do teach uh, around the country. I hold keynote speeches. I, I speak on panels, I teach classes, and thanks to me, um, you know, giving my time to other agents and educating them, they uh, returned the favor and giving me a lot of referrals, and the, this was in the beginning not very intentional, but it just happened, and I get between five and ten referrals a month. Yeah, that's fantastic, and if you uh, work our FES program, for anybody who's on the call, our Florida Educational Services program, we actually have a platform for that. So anybody who wants to can get involved in that. But by uh, getting out there and sharing your name and what you do is really important and creates a great opportunity. So uh, congratulations, Catherine. You've done a marvelous work with that. Yeah. I know two of your friends are Jason and Laura Burns from Pasadena. So uh, you're going to stay here in the spotlight with me as we talk to our special guest today, right? Really excited to have them on today. Yeah, so it's good to see you, Jason. Uh, you guys are already, you're, you're doing what couples should do and don't always do. You're going in two different directions here and tackling two different things today, right? Jason, you're uh, stationed in front of the Zoom and Laura, you're a little bit on the run today. We had intended to be together, but uh, we have a client who really wanted Laura at the property. We, we tried to leverage it with our team member. The team member showed up and the owner was waiting for Laura. So Laura said, my instinct says I need to go be there. So she is going to be there and... I am here at our home office. So uh, I, I love that you guys are transparent. And we were saying that before we were jumping on, we we're telling Laura, yeah, th this is real, right? We're real people, right? This is real real estate that we're doing here. And so you guys are taking care of business the way you need to. And uh, Laura, you just jumped in the car and said, I'm going to head right over there. You know, it is a luxury property, a luxury listing. She spotted us and watched us. And what you um, referenced earlier, Mark, is our six day blitz. And Part of the reason why she chose us in a multiple uh, listing presentation with many very top agents is because we are hands on. So this is part of real life and you guys know how real estate is, best of intentions and it can throw ever a wrench into anything. So here we are pivoting. The, yeah, so, the, uh, word, the word for 2020, 2021 and 2022. Well, I love that. And you guys pivoted at a really high level in 2020. In fact, you, I believe you had your best year ever. You're one of the top uh, teams in the entire country for Keller Williams Realty International. And let's stay on your six-day blitz idea, because when you joined us at our South Florida Regional Mastermind three or four years ago, it was a 10-day blitz. But Jason, you guys had to cut it back a little bit because of what was happening. And I think we have a little picture that will show us what that looks like on one of your listings as you share with us why you trimmed it down and kind of what you guys do on a six day blitz. Yes, yeah, so a quick synopsis, uh, the Wall Street Journal about nine years ago said that homes that go on the market on a Friday get a 1% better sale price than any other day of the week. So we shifted all our marketing to launch all our properties on a Friday. 
And then we we were doing this 10 day blitz. We we do everything in group showings. We really don't do private showings because we want people to come when other people are coming. So there's the competition. But then we show it Sunday. We do an event then and we show it during the week for caravan. And then we do a twilight event where we feed people and then we do the following weekend. We wanted to expose it over two weekends. When COVID hit, we immediately saw that People weren't coming to the homes nearly as often. We've been doing the 3D floor plan since 2014 when it first came out and drone videos since 2015. And we found a lot more people were using those avenues to see, see our properties. And so we were like, okay, we don't need to do the 10 day blitz. Additionally to that, um, as Bob Lucido says, he took our 10 day blitz and turned it into a four day blitz because he's, <laughs> he's competitive and we went, okay, let's do a six day blitz. That allows us to actually not be showing places over two weekends and do it over one weekend. So we have capacity to handle more listings. And so we shifted to a six day blitz because people weren't coming back the second and third time during COVID times. They didn't wanna be exposed. And that six day blitz has allowed us to Yes, have our best year ever um, and be able to take more listings and help more people. Yeah, you guys are known for your open houses. So one of the things is open houses. You have a twilight tasting, as we saw there on the screen uh, earlier. You do a caravan with agents and uh, then you come back uh, within a week and have another uh, open house. Right. So it's kind of uh, around the six day blitz idea. Yep, exactly. We want to get people to come when other people are there. We want there to be a line of people. When we launch on Friday, we have we start taking calls. Can we see it Friday, Saturday? No, the first showings are Sunday. So when people show up Sunday, there's a line of people out the door um, and you create that buzz right from the beginning. Now, we weren't allowed to do open houses for about a year here in, Lock in Southern California. So what we did, we did everything in scheduled showings. We scheduled it every 15 minutes. Um, or every 10 minutes so that people were booked back to back. So you still had that feel of competition. You still had that feel of people coming before you and after you. Um, so we weren't doing the events, um, but we still had that competition of being very scheduled and doing it when other people saw it, where so many agents were like, okay, we'll just show it whenever we can. We still wanted people to see the competition. And that's allowed us to go from and our list price to sale price the previous five years was 105%. Our market was about 98%. This year, our market has come up to 105% and we're at 113% list price to sale price. So continuing to outpace the market by 7 8% just by creating those strategies, using the technology and having set showings. And also by setting a deadline for when offers are due in our market, it creates that competition where people have to sense oh, I see all these people here, I see these people here. So when they get that multiple counter, they're willing to go higher. And in 80 plus percent of the time, the highest offer competes against themselves and goes higher than their highest offer, but they know that there were seven other offers or 54 other offers as the case may be a couple times. And then they pay the highest sale price. We've had, I think six properties this year that have gone more than $400,000 above list price. Wow. And our average list price is 1.3 this year. We've, we've closed 109 properties so far this year. Yep. And if I can chime in here, since yeah. we are at a caravan here with other brokers, it's really fun to see, you know, as Jason said, we weren't allowed to do open houses. So we shifted and created this outdoor signage that we did and in an environment where um, our state is very conservative on COVID. Um, we put all the marketing materials out here so people felt safe, comfortable, they can sign in. We have hand sanitizer, all masks, the whole nine yards. But this became our sign. Our tablecloth became our sign and our way to create an open house sign when it was illegal to do so. So it was just creating new opportunities with the parameters that exist. And that was what's so fun about the innovation that our team came up with in this time um, and how to pivot with what our culture would allow us to do and our rules and regulations. And now there's three or four other agents who now have tablecloths out front in front of our their listings as well, which is which is fine. We understand that as Tony DeSella said when coaching, we uh, we can create faster than people can replicate. So we're happy to share what we do, but as business owners and we, we can create faster than they're gonna copy and you've gotta be able to shift and pivot. Yeah, I love that. Uh, you know, uh, it's super smart to make that pivot. You guys also use a myriad of things, including video, 
Catherine, you and I talked about this. Sometimes yeah. a really glossy video is effective. Sometimes just being authentic in video is effective. You've seen both work, Catherine, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, for me right now, it even works better not to have those perfect videos because people are like, okay, it, the house doesn't look like this in real life. They want to see it through the eyes of a real person. And we saw your video that you did at one of your properties. It was really amazing. I thought it was genius. And even now, Laura, you're not in the office. You're not in a perfect setting. And it's still amazing to see that you're in action, right? It, all that counts sometimes is to just do it. Well, you know what? I, I think you bring up a great point. I mean, we try so hard or we intend on a daily basis. I know all of us look at our schedule the night before because we all know the day starts the night before and yet everything is lined up. And yet what industry are we in? We're in the industry of solving problems and in luxury, it is about that concierge white glove service. And so if we're creating that, we are going to be thrown with this and that. So how do we adjust accordingly and maximize our, our maximize our efforts? And um, I agree with you. I think the authentic, genuine nature, um, some of our best videos is just Jason and I bantering. I will say in the um, COVID times, without the open houses, we did do what we call deep dives, which were you know, long videos, videos that were 10 to 15, sometimes 20 minutes. Um, and we would do then a live um, interactive virtual tour experience from my, um, from our home, our home office where Jason is and really dive in deep about the property. Now that wasn't going to get the, you know, multiple hundreds or thousands of views. My, our goal there was to hit the buyers that really love the home so that they can emotionally connect with the home, have their questions answered and feel comfortable to actually submit an offer. Yeah, I love that. So we're going to take, Ariel, if you can, uh, and Lauren, Jason, we're going to take a look uh, uh, at one of the videos you guys did. Just It's a little one minute clip. And uh, Catherine and I watched it earlier. Everybody take a look, see what you think. Hello, hello, and welcome to our latest listing at 30 Hillcrest in the Rancho Mirage neighborhood of the Murata Estates. We are here just up from the Ritz-Carlton, uh, this beautiful setting. Again, you're gonna be wowed. Tonight, we're gonna be welcoming all interested parties or all the neighbors to come and join us for our twilight taco tasting. We're here in this beautiful living room, looking out across the Coachella Valley. We're gonna have live music. We're gonna have a DJ, we're gonna have tacos. Let's go out and take a look outside so you get a little feel for the property. This four bedroom on Sweet Home could be yours with these collapsible motorized doors, both in the living room and the breakfast area, which really creates the California living of indoor-outdoor. As you can see here, you too could enjoy hosting your events, family, friends, with views like this in this incredible pool and spa area with waterfalls. And don't forget you have benefits with the Ritz-Carlton Hotel behind the gate. Visit 30hillcrest.com and come join us tonight from 5 to 8 p.m. This home has more than 50, has 5,800 square feet of livable space, beautiful views. So we look forward to seeing you tonight. Today is Wednesday, August 11th. Come join us for our twilight tasting at 30 Hillcrest. There's, it's a gated community, so you'll have to go to the gate. They'll call us and we'll escort you in for our twilight tasting. Come and see us. All right, so that's a great example, right, of what you guys have been doing. And you've gotten a really good response from this, uh, Jason. Yes, and it's not all polished. That was just sort of here we are. Let's come and see, invite you in. We did a professional video. And one of the cool things we did with the professional video before with our deep dives is Laura and I would jump into the pool and those were our best hits at the end of the video. We had about five videos last year where one of us jumped into the pool fully clothed. It, each time it sort of got bigger and bigger and we brought our oldest of our daughters to one of the videos and she jumped in with us at one time in all our clothes as well. So again, you got to have fun with it and you get the engagement as best you can and you got you got to use the technology that's there. Yeah, and, and nice to have a piano player too. So you, you, you have a feeling you set that up. That uh, the guy wasn't just there, right? So part of your uh, strategy, I love that. Catherine, we, we talked about. What, we like I'm the sorry, go ahead, Laura. 
I was just going to say, Mark, it's about creating the experience, you know, in California, we're selling a lifestyle. And I feel like that is something that's very apropos for Florida. You're selling the lifestyle. You're selling how that indoor outdoor feel people come here for the fact of the warm weather, the warm water. Um, and so that outdoor dining. So you want to really create that experience throughout all of um, the showings. So in our twilight setting, that's when we have a musician, we have it catered. We also then have usually a live interactive experience. So sometimes we have a live artist who's painting the home and, and a landscape of the home. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Um, okay. So I have a few questions because I'm really curious on all the amazing things that you guys are doing. So I know that you are really big in uh, vouching for your full commission. Tell me a little bit on how you convince the clients to pay you 6% or even higher and what you do extra in order to achieve that. Thank you for the question. So that was one of the pivots we've had. We we are pretty firm on the 6%. Gary's, Gary's told us very clearly that our commissions are going to go down. We understand that. But at this point, we feel like we're bringing value. We, we know our data that we're what our list price to sale price is relative to the other. So that's one thing we always talk about. But one of the things as we lost a couple listings be, uh, because we were firm on 6% and people were saying they'll do it at 5% and people said, well, we just wanted to save that 1% on commission. About a year and a half ago, we said, listen, okay, what we'll do, we will uh, reduce our commission to five and a half percent, offering two and three quarters each side of the, of the transaction. Yet, if we get more than 105% of the list price, which is what we've been averaging, then you pay us the full 6%. What so, the averaging, honey? What's that? What the market's been averaging. So yes, when we started, it was what we were averaging. And then this year, it's what the market's averaging. So we say that 105%. And if we can beat that, then you pay that extra half percent. They're getting an extra 5% above the list price. We feel confident in our system this year, averaging 113%. So we're going to get that. And what has happened is that two and three quarters we offer to the cooperating broker, they still get the two and three quarters, but that extra half a percent, that comes to our side. So we've raised our... Uh, listing side commission from two and three from averaging three percent to three and a quarter percent because of this. So while people were trying to hammer us on commission to pay less on commission, we we said we'll go down to five and a half percent. We're not going all the way to five percent because we'll we're full time brokers. We've got a we've got six people in the operations. We have three people in the sales side. Yet what we found is that reducing it to two and three quarters. And then getting that extra half a percent, we're now getting three and a quarter percent on our side of the, a lot of our sales because of that. So we actually signed three listings last week and they all accepted the 6%. And I actually came home and said to Laura, I wish they would have bought us a little bit so I could have done that because we could get the three and a quarter percent yeah. by, by doing that. So it's, it's funny. And again, we were resistant, but then we said, okay, Gary's telling us we have to adjust yet here's how we're going to adjust. We're going to say we'll go to five and a half percent, yet you're going to pay more than, if we get more than the market average, then you're going to pay that extra half percent. And that half percent just comes to us. And the other buyers, the buyer's agents are still feeling really thankful because they're getting that two and three quarters where lots of agents out here are just going down to two and a half percent. And we've got a sale price, as I said, we're at 1.3. So you're getting a pretty nice commission at two and a half percent, um, but we're offering two and three quarters. And by offering that larger commission to the buyer's side, it's, it makes it a little more sticky. We have lots of buyer's agents when it comes time for requests for repair, they're willing to kick in. And we often say to them, don't kick in. You don't need to do that, but they're willing to because they're getting a higher commission than they are on most of the other listings at this price point. That's amazing. I love that. That's really, really smart. Okay, then um, tell me a little bit about, um, I saw that website that you have, I think it's better with Burns. And um, what is that, what is that home improvement program? Because that's very interesting. I just started doing something similar. I want to know all the details. What do you do? What do you offer? How does that benefit the seller? Laura, do you want to run with that one or me? No, I'd love to. And just going back to the commission aspect, bottom line is, you know, sellers loves options. They love having choices. So if you present them with some sort of flexible commission rate um, and guide them, they'll end up choosing what you ultimately really want them to do. Um, Jason and I, nine years ago, um, 
we were listing properties and putting them on the market and they were being purchased and then put back on the market about, you know, less than three months later. And we were noticing that some of our listings were, um, the sellers then left money on the table just by not doing a few of the things. And sometimes we find that the best return comes from painting, refinishing hardwood floors, staging, and landscaping. So no massive remodels of kitchens and bathrooms. Sometimes we do that, but um, typically we don't, we don't find that, uh, we find that that's too personal of a transformation. So what we decided is, okay, what could we do and how could we create the capital within our own company to front those funds for the sellers as a concierge service, such that we can then control the transformation and offer this option to them. And if we do do, let's say, $30,000 worth of work, can we obtain 90 to 120,000 at a minimum back for the seller? So this is our transformation program. And we ended up hiring someone on our team, Mike, who helps run this program because it's become so successful with the owners. And we love it. We love it because typically what happens is after we meet with them, go over the listing, give them, present this option, they love the fact that you have skin in the game and that you're willing to put that expertise out there so that they can have the ultimate gain in the pocket. And when we were talking to our team yesterday about this conversation of, you know, where, where are the strategies that we're really excelling in? All of them said, our training promotion program because we don't leave any penny on the table for the seller. And that's so fun to know that we're creating financial freedom. So when we meet with the seller, we, uh, Jason and I walk through and we go with what our recommendations are. So that's when we do the punch list of painter, stager, hardwood floor person, or these lights need to be changed out. This cabinet needs to be ripped out. Mm -hmm. We do give those cheat, cheat notes to Mike on our team. And then he sets up the vendor walkthrough. That vendor walkthrough is kind of like an old reunion. All the vendors love meeting with each other and hanging out and walking through. And then usually 72 hours later, they provide the bids, which we review with the seller. The seller then has that opportunity to say, I don't want to spend this money or can we get this price down? Or what do you think about this? Um, typically they work with our vendors, uh, vendors that we don't have an ownership with. We just have a great relationship with, and they understand our time frame. They understand the desire to turn this around quickly and get it on the market. So they're very highly motivated because they know if they do a great job, they'll get the next offering for bids at our next listing. Um, so owners want to use their own. Um, that's a little more complicated because then we're at the mercy of their time tables and usually we're delayed on going on the market when that happens. And we, we usually won't front the costs unless they're using the vendors that we trust because we, we can't put our name to their vendors. We can put our name to our vendors. And so we'll front the costs each of the last four years. We fronted more than $250,000 to our sellers and then we get reimbursed through the proceeds at the end. All we do in the contract is we say, um, it should should buy should seller cancel or listing expire, you are required to reimburse us for the full cost within two business days of the listing expiring or being canceled, so that we're protected in that. Um, but we don't get to that point, so we, we say seller to reimburse us for entirety of transformation costs. Our general contractor, he's happy to get paid through escrow um, because he, he knows that when we put our home on the market, it's gonna get sold. Our hardwood floor person, our landscaper, um, our- Mom and pop. The mom and pop, they don't have the leverage to do that. They need to get paid. So we front that cost and then just get reimbursed. And again, for those people that, when we're helping people that have been in the home 40, 50 years and all their, equity is in the home and they don't have fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to put up, then we can do that. And then it gets them an extra eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 in their sale price. And it's like, oh my goodness. And, we, and we've and we helped them maximize their return by doing those simple things uh, that are is the, the aesthetic. Again, most of the time we're not redoing kitchens. We're not redoing bathrooms other than painting and flooring. Is that your benchmark? You gave some numbers. Is it about three to four times return? So if I put in 30, I should get 90 to 120 back. Exactly. Yep. That's a mic right here. Yeah. And it, 
as we say, if you're going to put in 10, you don't want to get 10. If you're putting in 10,000, you want to get 40. If you're putting in 20, you want to get 80. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. Also, you know, what's good about a pro offering a program like this is you get a real temperature gauge on how the seller is going to react. In other words, what will they allow you to do in your expertise? Are they going to really trust you and let you take their largest investment and maximize it for them? Or are they going to be, you know, more of skeptical? And so you'll then know, just like you'll know their personality traits on how to work with them, it'll be kind of a benchmark on how your relationship will go throughout the transaction. That's really? terrific. I, I do have a question for that, though. Do you charge them, like, if you upfront the cost, do you charge them, like, a financing cost or anything? No? We don't. No, we don't. Now, we do go after that higher commission. So te people tend not to say anything then at that point. They're sent to be, this is great. We love it. We are appreciative. And then, you know, and then we don't have issues with the commission. Wow. So it's that added benefit. So you you add more value and then people don't even question the commission. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Correct. Okay, look at that. If you love if that. you give value to people, they're willing to pay the price, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, these are things that not everybody is offering. So they're a special things for your clients, which is terrific. You really uh, your clients are really important to you and you like to get them involved in what you do. Tell us about the Burns Team Blessings program that you have. You guys contribute more to that than most realtors make in a year. Hmm. That's going to make me cry. Keller <laughs> <laughs> um, in one of our masterminds specified that we highly recommended that we have a nonprofit and I, you know, lead in that giving back spirit, which is really the backbone, uh, backbone of so much of uh, Keller Williams International. And um, at that point, I think Ben Kenny was one of the first, if not maybe the only that had that and was utilizing their charitable givings in a really unique way by incorporating it through the business. So that sponsorships, um, charitable givings tied back to his company. So he was getting that recognition and that name was thought out throughout real estate and philanthropic. So Jason and I, met and we figured out a way to create our own nonprofit called um, Burns Team's Blessings. And one of our favorite things that we do is putting a money away for every, after every transactions such that, and I know these unit numbers are not as, not as big as in Florida, but in Southern California, agents don't typically do over a hundred, um, deals and, and helping people. And so when we hit that hundred deal, we wanted to celebrate because it's extremely unique here in Los Angeles. So, um, we wanted to celebrate by giving that money back to charity. So we created this really fun hundredth family, individual person help, um, charitable giveaway. Jace, do you want to explain how we set that up? So in 2016 with our hundred sale, there was this competition, which is going to be the hundred sale. And then we gave that full commission that year, that hundred sale was 18,500. It was great. We gave the full 18,500. We had like three clients who were all in escrow and closing within a day or two. And it was like, which is going to be the hundred. Then those people still to this day feel so excited. We were the hundred sale. We, our commission was given away the next year. We actually double ended our hundredth and hundred first. So we decided, okay, let's give both sides of that commission away. So it was $34,000. The next year, I think it was 46,000. Cause again, uh, I think we double sided last year. What we decided to do, we said, you know, let's just not give our hundredth commission away. Let's give our largest commission away. So our largest commission in 2020, $76,000. And what we do with this 100th commission, we have a um, social and loyal program that's sort of where people can go and vote. It's a loyalty program. Um, and so we create this voting system where all our past clients can go and vote for their favorite nonprofit. Our team chooses our top 10 nonprofits that we are supporting year round and involved with. Lars on the board of one, I'm on the board of another. Um, et cetera. And then we also give an other box. So all our past clients, all our family and friends can go and vote for their favorite nonprofit. And then based on the voting is how that 18,500 to $76,000 gets dispersed. So last year in 2020, uh, that 76,000, we had 6,200 votes for I think 63 different nonprofits. And as I was sort of going through and dividing it up, 
we needed more money to give away. So we raised it to 96,000. We gave away 96,000 to these 63 nonprofits last year in 2020. Everyone who got one vote got $250. And then the nonprofit that had 1300 votes that got the most votes, they got 12,500. So on that hundred sale, we do a big event where we invite the nonprofits to come and getting all these people that we invite the top 15. We do the big checks where we give them the big checks. And then we, in, we do this event, we serve food and getting nonprofits to talk to each other. They're like-minded and then it's, it's great. This year, what we did with our hundred sale, we decided for a hundred families helped, we're gonna give a hundred thousand dollars away. So we just sort of set it at a hundred thousand. So we just, we closed our hundredth, gosh, about four weeks ago. And we then started doing the voting. We closed our voting on September 30th. We had 9,700 votes for, I think, I think 56 different nonprofits this year. So on October 27th, we're doing our event. We're inviting the top 22 nonprofits. We're inviting all our database to come to this party where we're giving away $100,000 to these nonprofits. And it's super fun to do that. Um, again, this is on top of, we, again, we both grew up in, a, in families where we're giving a tithe. So we naturally set aside 10% of every commission to give away. So that's part of our business. So last year, the commission we did was like 2.6 something. So we gave away $260,000 plus the 96. Uh, this year, um, I think we're at 2.7 in GCI so far. Um, we're tracking for about three and a half um, plus this 100,000. So we'll give away around $450,000 this year. We have on our written goals to give away a million dollars in a year within five years. So that's sort of our stated goal. The team knows it. And um, these are ways, it's part of who we are. We love giving back. It's a sales pitch to our clients. And again, it comes back to Gary telling us, if you're going to be giving away, be strategic in it. Setting up this nonprofit, people will rally around that. And we get the newspapers to come and cover the event. Um, it's, it's, it's a win all the way around. It's really dynamite. Laura, 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 you can jump in here in a minute, but I want to show everyone and then have you share on this to show how you tell the message because you you have a nice video you produced here again it's about a minute long we're going to show that and then laura i'd love for you to jump in there and comment you guys are the big winners you all had the most votes with over no 1300 way. votes so, what? Yeah, what? so really yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Incredible. We are incredibly grateful uh, for your incredible uh, partnership and generosity. Thank you again for all the support. Thank you for this gift. Such an awesome charity gift back. So a great video, and Laura, you can tell this has an impact on your people, and you're connecting your your people as community, right? Yeah, you know, what's so fun about two things I'd say is that we have full buy-in on the team. Um, this is how they function. This is their values and characters as well. So that's what I love. When you log in and have the opportunity to vote, every team member put in somebody that's so imp important to them. And that makes me happy um, because we all have that common goal and that common purpose. Um, and so I wanted to share that as well as, you know what's kind of funny, Mark, is that this year, is the first year I realized 
it's kind of gone to its own new level and it's gone on its own life form as well. And it's taking off. And the reason why I share that with you is, and maybe it's because California has been in a lockdown for a long time. And, you know, we've been kind of more as a nucleus, as a family and not seeing as many people in the community, but Jason and I started and our kids, we would, we start, you know, we're going out to dinner on Friday night. And we started having people look at us a little bit more and um, at one of these dinner places. And then people now stop us and are like, hey, you guys are those real estate agents that are doing that cool give back. It's on our calendar. We're so ready to vote this year. And so what I realized is, oh my goodness, this is starting to take its life on its own. And it's so fun. We created the system. We ripped off the model from another incredible agent, you know, Martin Belmont, who was doing this and then added our own spin to it. And now it's its own life form and it's creating its own lead generating opportunities as well. Um, And this is the first year that I realized through this that, um, you know, people are now recognizing us and we may not know them but they know who we are. So it's a whole nother way of kind of making sure you're not that secret agent. And it's understanding what, that, that you have a mission beyond just selling people houses, right? Correct. Our mission really is to influence the lives of others through financial freedom. And Jason and I, our personal focus is through the lives of children. So our personal mission is we believe that our impact on the world and our local community can be by bettering children and starting with their education and their foundation such that they can then give back on a higher level as they're older. So a lot of the nonprofits that Jason and I are personally involved with are children centric. That's really amazing. Um, I mean, I love everything you're doing. It made me cry. It's really amazing and an inspiration. I want to look into that too. Um, tell me a little bit, like, um, I know you you two have a beautiful family. Um, I was taking a class with Jason when you were pregnant with your third. I remember I, I that. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit, like, you three girls, they're just so cute to watch. Um, like, how do you divide the workloads between the two of you? I, I'm sure you get asked this quite a lot, but how do you manage doing like the job, the family, and, and you still live a life by design? You're muted, Laura. Um, Jace, do you want to lead with it first or do you want? <laughs> well, it takes a village. I will start with that. We are fortunate to have Both of our moms nearby who are both willing to help. We are fortunate to have an incredible nanny who is with our girls at home. She's a former teacher and like-minded with uh, with us. And so she's been here the last two years um, as we've been home. She's out there with our youngest, our soon to be three-year-old and helps them. But we've also made the very purposeful decision to have our children involved and to have them with us. So we take them to a lot of these events. You saw at the charity give back. Our, our girls are there. They're, they're knowing what's going on. They're interacting. When we're entertaining clients, we do a lot at sporting events. They're, they're coming with us with, with the clients. They're, um, they'll come to some of our twilight tastings with tacos. Um, so we, we have leverage, we have help. Um, we pay for that. And we've also got family that's a blessing to to us in that um, when we do our team advance in two weeks um, where we take all nine members away for a couple days and plan for the next year my mom will stay with the three girls so we're fortunate that we have that around um, your t- Laura what do you want to add to how we divide the the roles and everything Laura do you want to take that yeah I would add to to your thoughts Jason is we have an incredible business team that also feels like a family that we truly trust. And I say that because um, I would give anything for them and I know vice versa. And so we have created this symbiotic relationship where everyone's there to help each other. And like, Colin's here helping me today so that I can be here. And, um, 
And I love that at home. Um, the village is critical and critical to success. I think leverage is key. Doing as much preparation the night before is also key personally for the home front so that we can successfully get two out of three to school. Our daughters, our eldest just turned seven on Saturday, lost her first tooth last night. So the tooth fairy had to come. It was crazy. <laughs> day I we needed to you know wanted to be here and we knew we had a couple caravans and luxury properties so you know the day starts running it really starts running um so having that preparation as much the night before for the home life leverage in that home life I is really critical and then you know there's certain things that where my expectations and standards of our home life I kind of let it go. Um, we have a pile of laundry that has to be put away. And so then taking, <laughs> I love the transparency <laughs> so in 30 minutes, um, twice a week and saying with the girls, okay, I know just one load. Thank you, Crystal. Right. <laughs> it's like a ton of loads. Um, and taking 30 minutes with the girls and being like, okay, let's make a game out of this. Who can do it? You know, and, and saying to myself, my house does not have to be a staged home. It's okay. Um, mm -hmm. that it's not, um, in the pandemic when we were doing every meal at home and I felt like I was the cook, the cleaner, the um, grocery store provider and a businesswoman and a mom and a wife and all that. Guess what I did? I moved to paper plates and I was like, we're doing it. We're doing paper plates and plastic cups because I don't want to be in front of the dishwasher 5 million times a day. And our kids are just learning how to load a dishwasher. So, you know, just giving yourself that grace and understanding I have personally found that in our business that can get chaotic, let's be transparent, our life can get chaotic, yet we choose this life because it is our life by design. I, I really focused on this last two years on our health and creating that pocket of time for Jason or I and us together to do something for us. So I've become a Pelotoner. I'm like, love my Peloton bike and app. So if you are a Pelotoner, please friend me so we can be friends because I need the <laughs> encouragement. And I'm, it is everything to me. I find that my day is so, I am more than 1% better when I take that 30 minutes for me early in the morning, because then I can run through the morning with the girls, get them out to school, make them feel good, give them loves and hugs and kisses. Jason and I've made that choice to drop them off in the morning and ideally pick them up in the afternoons if we can work our appointments around it. And I love that we have chosen to make that those choices to bring them with us. You know, we have charitable events Saturday night that we're so privileged to be honored at. And we said to them, so we're RSVPing with our kids. And I think it threw them for a little bit. And then they're like, yeah, we'd love to have your kids with us. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's kind of how we roll. If you look at Laura on Peloton, I think she's worked out on Peloton 190 of the last 191 days. She missed one day when we were in Mexico and oh, it it ticked her off <laughs> like none other that she didn't get that mark um, checked off. But we're both committed to that and we've recognized that that's a huge part of what we do. And so. Amazing. Well, you guys have been uh, fabulous to share your time today. We loved having you out at our South Florida regional mastermind a few years ago, and uh, you've grown so much. I mean, 129 families helped uh, last year is amazing. And it uh, sounds like you're doing even bigger things uh, this year. So congratulations on all your success. Thanks for sharing with us. And again, we appreciate your time so much. Here's your contact information so people can connect with you. And we look forward to again, seeing you again sometime soon. Thanks. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. This is such a pleasure. If anyone has questions, reach out to us. Um, and thanks for rolling with how life is. You know, pivot, pivot. I'm so glad. The fun thing about this listing is just to give you guys a quick update. It's first time on the market in 40 years. A million seven nine eight is the list price. Our um, open event on Sunday had 187 guests through the home. Wow. I to have multiple offers by Friday. 
Um, and if we don't break the two million mark, it will be a shock. So, <laughs> you, will. you will. We have confidence in you. Right. So it's just super fun. And it's fun to get to do this, not only with our amazing team, but my partner in life, Jason, and um, through Keller Williams. I, I will say this, I, without Keller Williams um, maps coaching and um, just, they changed our life. They changed our life financially. They changed our life and our perspective of what we really could accomplish and how fun that we now have friends all over the world because of it. So, <laughs> oh, hi, Hernan. I love him. Um, <laughs> But anyway, friend us on Facebook, Instagram, and please friend me on Peloton. I'm Burns Riders. And I don't know what Jason is. I think he's like Burnsy 14 or something. Yes. Lars <laughs> Lar more fun on Peloton. Um, so thank you all. We know that there's so many talented people in your own market and across the country and being able to be a part of this. And that you all went and did some research and found some of those videos. Thank you for being purposeful. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. We loved our time back there three, four years ago. Hope we can come again and please reach out. We are in this to help other people, help our clients build relationships and Mark and Catherine and everyone there. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys again. We learn and grow together. So uh, thanks for being here. We're gonna uh, share a couple other things before we uh, uh, cut loose here. So Catherine, you can hang with me if you want. We're gonna show the uh, KW social media toolkit, the luxury social media toolkit. We've shown this before. We just want to remind you of some of the things that KW provides. Our Lord did a great job, Catherine, of talking about the value of coaching, right? And all these resources that we have you know, with KW, if we use them, if you go to the luxury site, there's a social media toolkit you can click on. And there's some great pieces that you can send out. There's informational pieces, other piece, pieces that you can use to connect on social media. So Catherine, just another example of the pieces that are available through uh, all the resources at KW. Love it. There are uh, some articles in there, home prices increasing. There's also uh, some things that are more lifestyle geared, right? Where you can find the fall leaves. Uh, you're seeing pictures there. So if you haven't checked that out, we just like to make you available. We're on these calls about the things that are happening there. So we also wanna let you know about the numbers. We always go through the numbers and it's staggering what we're finding as we, as we collect these throughout the year. Total listings taken, almost 27,000 through August. Largest luxury sales force uh, in the world is right here at Keller Williams. Total listings sold 18,000. The sold volume is 30, that's B, billion with a B right there, right? <laughs> Uh, you've also got close sales volume of uh, almost 34 billion. So total, that's about 64 billion in closed sales volume. Nobody else is doing that. Number of agents who've transacted over a million, 17,994. We're sharing these numbers with you so that when you go out on listing presentations and you're talking to your clients, they understand the power of numbers and the power of the luxury group that you're with. Catherine, these have been important for you, haven't they? Yes, absolutely. I show this to clients whenever they uh, they want to know what we're doing in the luxury world. And some people are not aware we're doing those big numbers, especially if you compare to other companies. We're, we're like leading by far. Yeah, uh, it's uh, Ariel shared in here in the chat. These numbers can be downloaded from the Luxury Hub on Connect as well. So you've got two ways that you can share them and make sure that you're letting people know the value of that and make sure you're connecting with people for referrals because that's powerful too. We also want to give you a good a local story uh, this month that uh, we've got to share with you. Uh, CBK, her, is going to pop into our uh, view here. Uh, Catherine, uh, look uh, at this. Look. A $2 million uh, listing, $1.9 million. Uh, out there in Jupiter. And I think we have CB on here. Hi, CB. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. You want to tell us about this listing and how you got it? Yeah, sure. Um, this was a referral from another client that I'd worked with. He had a house in Palm Beach Gardens and I had um, made a great sale for him. And he had a friend that lived in Elston, West Palm Beach that had inherited this house from his mother, um, had never been sold before. And he decided that it was time to sell the property. So he had met with a couple of agents in the area. And then asked his friend if he could refer someone just to see someone that had um, a good rapport with him. And so I met with them. We talked. Uh, I spent about an hour and a half going through the house and just talking about the area. And he said, uh, let's sign. So I, I signed that day and, uh, and we got it sold uh, like one day on the market, really. 
Congratulations. That's an amazing story. How of relationships. Yeah, relationships are everything. So now you got it from another client. Are you reaching out and calling your uh, past clients or how are you doing that to stay in touch with your people? So I stay in touch with everybody at all time. There really isn't a one time. Um, I'm constantly attached to my phone. They know that once I have gone um, under contract and close with them, that I'm always there just a text away or a call away or an email away. Like my phone, I tell them it's my umbilical cord. So it's always attached to me. I usually run the business from about uh, seven in the morning till 3 a.m. In the, in the morning. So I do service um, other states uh, with different time zones and other countries. So that's really helpful because I'm able to be up and around to answer questions or even talk to them at the wee hours of the morning. So it's, it's actually been really great building relationships. Catherine, that's something we talk about a lot, right, is, is making sure you're staying in touch with your clients and developing the relationships to get a, a business. And we have to dive in headlong to that, don't we? Absolutely. Like when I get a referral from a, from a past client, I always send them like a gift box or something like wine or cheese or whatever, something nice. Um, I always stay in touch with my clients too. It's like they're my friends or family. Yeah, no, it's very important. I just closed on another transaction on new construction and uh, I sent them, you know, a basket of uh, Sherry's berries and a big fruit basket or a chocolate basket. I mean, it means the world to them and they're not expecting it. When it's the referral who, who gave you the client, they're not expecting to get anything on the other end. So when they receive something on their door, doorstep, they're like completely amazed. They're very touched. They're blown away and they will send you more people. They do. They really appreciate it. Well, CB, we're really excited about your success. We just wanted to share that because there are deals like this happening all around the region, but we're so proud of you and the deal that you did and the way you're conducting your business. So thanks for sharing with us as well today. Thank you. Good job. All right, Catherine, a couple other things we'd like to remind people about. Uh, we've got a digital marketing tool. I don't know if you've used this, Catherine, but we made a deal with Michael Lewis and he puts together postcards for us and everybody has the opportunity to use these uh, just listed, just sold type cards and they'll put them together for you for free if you just contact uh, your market center and use this uh, uh, website address. We'll get you set up and uh, it will cost you nothing. It's part of being part of our luxury group. It's an amazing tool. You should all utilize that. And in this fast moving market, we sometimes forget to market our new or sold listings just because like, you know, there's just the next listing coming along and we don't have time to really milk that one listing like we used to when the market was slower. And we started doing really print campaigns again about four months ago and we got a lot of new listings out of it because nobody does it right now. Nobody has time to do it. Yeah, so you're kind of counter-programming, right? You're going where everybody is not. You're doing uh, thinking outside the box. Yeah. Yeah, love that. You're also, uh, one of the things you did recently, you were teaching with Brady Sandal. Brady does a thing every Friday. We just want to remind people, uh, he, he live streams on Connect every Friday at one o'clock. So if you're not dialed into this, uh, you, you can find this on the Connect site. And we want to remind people, but Brady has really been marching all over the country, hasn't he, Catherine? He's amazing. He's everywhere. He's I see him in Colorado, in California. He's somewhere else every week. Yeah, he yeah. gives great value to all of us. So you should definitely tune into that. Yeah, and he was uh, here in Miami with us, I think, two, three weeks ago. Ariel, you trying to jump in? Oh, I just want to say before you wrap up, Crystal has a question in the chat. Oh, great. Um, Crystal, if you want to ask it. About sending closing gifts. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. When somebody's sending you a referral, are you giving them the gift when they give the referral or when you close the transaction from the referral? Well, I try okay. to send it to them right away and not make it contingent on the closing, but we're right now so busy that I sometimes forget or don't find the time. But um, for sure, it needs to come when it's closed, ideally earlier, because you don't want people to feel you're only rewarding them when the transaction closes. You want to reward them even when the transaction doesn't close, because it's really not their fault if it you know, doesn't fruit to anything. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. CB, anything you want to add to that? No, the same thing. Between the time that the what, when the referral comes, I usually will call the client to thank them personally for sending that person to me. If I can't get them, leave a message. And then between the time that I sign with them and before it closes, we'll send the gift some sometime in the middle between there. But yeah, it gets busy, but we definitely get it done. Yeah, it's not contingent on the closing. 
Yes, we've even discussed plans where there's uh, uh, six or eight touches in there with little gifts and little things along the way, just to stay in touch with your client and let them know they're appreciated along the way. Catherine, you're shaking your head. Did you, you yeah. do that sometimes too? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, um, we, uh, we normally do after the inspection period is over on buyers, we send them either a gift basket or something small and they're so happy that they get something. And when I bring them then a closing gift, they're like, I already got a gift. So, <laughs> they're so happy about it. And sometimes I have buyers that also need to sell their home, but they want to use someone else that is in their area. And then when they see how generous we are and how good our services, they change their mind and let us also list their old home. So it has happened many times. And the other thing that we do, and I told you this earlier, Mark, we just send to all of our clients like... Um, those pumpkin kits where you can cut the pumpkin and people just love little gifts that come in the mail and they don't really cost that much. Yeah, it's the thought and it's a gesture. So yeah, uh, thank you for asking Crystal and thank you CB again for uh, sharing with us today. Our next call, Catherine, is going to be November 16th at one o'clock. We just want to invite everyone to put that on their calendar. Uh, we've got more and more of these end of the year uh, parties and things to contact your clients. We'll talk about some of those and uh, some of those ideas as well. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And again, great guest today with uh, Jason and Laura, right, uh, Catherine? They always share so much and have so many cool ideas. I absolutely, I absolutely love them. I adore them. I, I think the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway for me was um, that you can be generous without, um, without a feeling you lose money from your business because I feel they give so much, but they get so much in return. Emotions, um, they probably get a lot of clients from it and they just do good with the intention of doing good, but they also get business from it. So that was really like a big learning experience for me. Yeah, well, uh, thank you for uh, walking through this with me and sharing and asking some great questions. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next month as well.